Kenichiwa, this is the Shogun's theme, and this is a follow-up on breaking in my Provision 6 in size 9.5. These are the shoes here I just got back from the uh, the gym. So just uh, to point out, it's uh, monsoon season here in Phoenix, so it's been raining a lot, plus it's about 100 degrees outside, so I have not uh, hit the road in the shoes. I've been wearing them on the indoor track at the uh, fitness center here in town. So take them out on about four runs, did about uh, 40 minutes, 30, 40 minutes on each run. And uh, first thing, especially on the first run that I want to point out is, even though I've worn a lot of ultra shoes in the past, I had not worn ultra for running probably in at least two or three uh, years. I do have a pair of Olympus that I use for rucking, so I do wear them for, for walking but not running. So that's the last zero drop shoe that I've worn but not for running. In terms of running, uh, I've had numerous pairs of provision, but it's been two or three years since I've run in provisions. So the first thing doing that natural running on that first run, I forgot how different it was. So I was definitely uh, a lot more tired on that first run than I was used to. By the, again, by the third or fourth run, like today, I was able to run definitely at least an extra 10 minutes further than I had run on that first run. So if you are new to ultra, or even if you're someone like me who... Um, is very familiar with zero drop and the natural running and trying not to, you know, uh, you know, heel strike. And again, even still having a pair of ultra that I at least use for, for heavy rucking, uh, it still was uh, a little bit of a learning curve in the beginning there. So keep that in mind that uh, if you're new to zero drop, you don't want to run out and do a, a long run right away. You want to get, uh, you want to kind of break it in, not just for breaking in like a new shoe, but just remembering how to do that uh, natural uh, running. Now, in terms of the, the sizing and, and the comfort, the last shoe I had for running before this was a Hoka uh, Bondi in, uh, I have a very wide foot, so they were like 4E. And that's probably the reason that I, that I got them. At least they were the wide. I don't know if they were 4E or 2E. But they were the, one of the only Hokas that came in a, in a, in a width. Now, I enjoy like the Speed Goat I use also for rucking. I switch them off with the Olympus. But um, normally, I don't like a shoe with a ton of cushioning. And those Hoka's were extremely comfortable, but they were too soft, in my opinion. So in running with them, it was really like running on, on sponges in a, in a way. Nice and wide for my foot, comfortable, but in terms of, of the run, they were just too soft. So going in and running in these again, there was definitely more stability. And these aren't, you know, like my old Innovates, which were almost no cushion. There's cushion in here. But again, it was uh, a lot more firm of a shoe than the Hoka, which I, I liked. So I felt that I had more support in these shoes. I felt I had more motion control, but I felt like it was a sturdier shoe, which is the reason that my Hoka's are still not in bad shape. They just were too squishy, just too soft. Are they going to be a shoe that I'd wear to, around the house or even at this point, you know, wear just to, to go out? Yeah, maybe. But I, I just can't run them anymore. They're just too, too soft. And this, I felt, gave me the right amount of stability. They were... Um, there's cushioning in here, but it's not over the top like those those Hoka were. Now, again, in terms of my wide foot, the toe box is is wide enough, in my opinion. But the shoe is a little narrower than I remember the provision being. They're not too narrow, so I can definitely still wear them. They're they're comfortable, but they're not as they're not nearly as wide as again coming from the Hoka, and I think before the Hoka, I had at least two pairs of 
Brooks. I don't remember if it was the the addiction or the the go. I don't remember which Brooks it was. It wasn't the beast. It might have been the addiction. But I my two previous shoes were Brooks. They were also um, nice and wide. These are clearly not as wide, but I feel like uh, my foot is in more control. So they're not narrow, and I feel there's there's enough room in here. But there's definitely a difference between wearing these and again those you know 4E uh, Brooks. So it's a little bit of a of a tighter fit, but not too tight. You know, when that, sometimes I put on a shoe, I can't even get the shoe on. You know, right away it's too narrow. That wasn't the case with with these. They're definitely wide enough, but they're not. Um, as wide as I think I, I remember. Also the sizing. As I've mentioned in numerous videos, sizing has always been the issue with Ultra that there's no consistency. These are in a nine and a half. Um, I ordered these online, which is always very risky with, with Ultra. I ordered nine and a half because that's basically what shoe size I've been wearing in almost everything the last year or two. And it's like a, I don't know if perfect fit is the right word, this is like, they're, they're like the exact right size. They, they could not be any smaller, and they shouldn't be any, any bigger, if that makes any sense. Um, they're like right at the right size. Again, if it was a, a tiny bit smaller, it would be too small. And again, they're not, uh, my foot is, is very uh, supported. They're not, you know, moving around. They're very... Uh, you know, they're not slipping or anything, so it's definitely not uh, too big. It's not big in any way. So it's, like, just the right size, but, like, just made it. If it were any smaller, they would be too small. So I think it's the, the exact right size, but there's not a lot of extra room in there. So it, it, it's, it's right there. So, again, depending on how you wear your shoes, if you like something that feels a little bigger, maybe you might want to go a half size up. But these are like right there. And compared to, again, the Hoka, which had, you know, again, just too much cushion, uh, too much room, it was a nice switch. So, again, I've not been on the road with them. It's just uh, we've had monsoon storms. And, again, it's like over 100 degrees. So it's not exactly outside running weather yet. But on the indoor track, they were fine. Again, just keep in mind, if you're new to zero drop, you know, give it a little time in the beginning because even as someone that was experienced with zero drop but had been away from it for a little while, it was a little bit of a learning curve again to, to get used to. That first run was a little little tough. But again, by the fourth run, uh, I feel I'm, I'm back to uh, using that uh, natural running and uh, not heel striking and, and making sure to land on the front of my feet and my toes used to being you know kind of spread out like they, they should be. So definitely keeping the shoes, and it's been a, a good start. Again, the sizing is just right. There's not a lot of extra room at all. So again, if you, you want something that's a little big, you might want to go a half size up. And for those of you with wide feet, I'm not having an issue with the width, but they're not overly wide. They're not as wide as I remember them being. And again, it's not like a, a 2E or a 4E. I believe in the Torin you can get more width with uh, the Ultra. Problem I had with the Torin, I tried on a, a pair locally here, and they were just too comfortable, almost like the, the Hoka again. They were just too cushioned. That's why I stood, stayed away from the, the Torin. So again, I have a wide foot, and this wasn't an issue, but again, it's just like the sizing. They're just wide enough. If it was any more narrow, then maybe they wouldn't work. So that's a progress report on my provision nine point. Uh, my provision six in size nine and a half. This is the Shogunstein out.